After we've classified our inventory as uh, an A, a B, or a C item, it's important for us to manage the inventory and make sure that what we believe we have on hand is genuinely there. Uh, it doesn't do us any good if we think that we have 100 units of some component in stock, and then when we go to pull that item from inventory to either use internally or to sell to a customer, that we're short 10 or 15 or 20 pieces. So there's two different methods uh, to audit the amount of inventory that we have on hand to make sure that what we believe that we have is genuinely there. The first method is a physical inventory, and that's the counting by hand, weight, or bulk of all of an items in a company's inventory to validate the record accuracy. It's usually taken annually or semi-annually. So if any of you have ever worked in retail, you know what a physical inventory is, and you just cringed a little at the thought of that word. A physical inventory is when we shut down the facility. Many times people will come in either late at night or they'll come in for um, many days on end and all they will do is count material to make sure that what we think we have an in inventory is genuinely there. It's very disruptive to the business and um, it, it's not as accurate as cycle counting, which we'll discuss in a second here, because generally with physical inventory, you've got people who are not experts in moving material around the facility. They're not experts in knowing where the things generally are located or where the stock locations are. So for someone like me that doesn't work in the stock room on a routine basis, trying to find the inventory and count the inventory is going to take longer than someone who is trained in that area and does it every day. So physical inventory is a burden. Um, it's a nuisance uh, to um, the facility, but physical inventory is also sometimes a necessary evil because again, you want to make sure that the inventory that you think you have is there. So there's another way to check inventory to make sure that it's physically there and manually count it, but it's not nearly as disruptive to the business. And that's called cycle counting. Cycle counting is the counting of items on a continuous basis by an independent team of cycle counters. The counting activities are structured so that each item is counted at least once a year. The advantages of cycle counting versus physical inventory is that it eliminates shutdowns and interruptions. It eliminates the annual inventory adjustments, so taking all these inventory adjustments at the same time. Trained personnel audit the inventory accuracy. So what you have are folks who work in the stock room, most likely, who every day are counting a select amount of products, and therefore, because they're trained, they know where the inventory is, it's easier for them to find it and to count it. It allows causes of errors to be identified and corrected in real time. It's important to say that. So uh, because you'll be just doing cycle counting every day or every week, uh, you are more likely to find any issues with your inventory management system. So again, if you think 100 items are there and you're about to go build an order, you do a cycle count and you only find 90, it gives your purchasing team more time to go out and buy the 10 units that you're short. And then cycle counting helps us to maintain accurate inventory records because as we go and do the inventory adjustments, uh, even though inventory adjustments are bad, whether those numbers go up or whether those numbers go down, more than anything, we want accurate inventory and cycle counting helps us to get accurate inventory records. It's often used with ABC analysis to determine the cycle counting policy. And we will go over that here in just a second. But uh, the two kinds of physical inventories are an actual physical inventory where you do it uh, annually or semi-annually, uh, they are very disruptive to the business. And then cycle counting is done by professionals. They do it um, routinely. Again, it could be weekly, uh, could be daily, could be hourly, but it's done on a frequent basis by professionals. And then that uh, helps to uh, eliminate shutdowns and interruptions, and it helps to make adjustments in more real time. So here is an example of cycle counting. So let's say that we have determined that we have 500 A items, we have 1,750 B items, and we have 2,750 C items. That gives us a total of 5,000 items in inventory. That's a lot more than the example we just did with 14 items. So we have 5,000 items in inventory. Our policy is to count A items every month, which is 20 working days that will be given to you. Our B items every quarter, which is 60 days and our C items every six months, which is 120 working days. So how many items will be counted in the cycle count process per day? Now, before we dive into this example, just remember that we have 5,000 items in inventory. We're gonna count 
the A items because they're more expensive, they're more critical to our organization once a month, which means that we're going to count them 12 times per year because we're going to be counting them every single month. So one day a month, someone is going to physically walk to that stock location and count how many, however many items are there for that SKU. Do we have 100 items? Do we have 99? Do we have 105? Whatever it may be, they will do the cycle count. They will check to see what inventory is there. And for the A items, that will be once every single month. Once every quarter, you will do the B items, and once every six months, so just twice a year, you'll do the C items. So a C item, you're going to count twice a year, and an A item, you're going to count 12 times per year. So that shows the discrepancy between how much more valuable those A items are versus the C. So for our cycle counting example, this is going to calculate how many items we're going to count every single day. So it's simple math. We're going to take our 500 A items. They're counted once a month, which is 20 working days. So every single day, we will be counting 25 A items. For our Bs, we have 1,750 B items. So we will be counting them every 29, uh, sorry, 29 per day. So because we count them every quarter, which is a 60 days in a quarter, there, we're going to be counting 29 B items per day. On to the C items. There's 2,750 C items. We count them once every six months, which is 120 working days. So we will be counting 23 C items per day. So now what, what should jump out to you a little bit here is that you're going to be counting more A items every single day than you are C items, even though there are three times, four times, five times as many C items as there are A items. There's 2,750 C items, and there's only 500 A items. But because our policy is to count A items once a month, you're actually going to be counting more A items every single day than you are C items. So per our cycle counting policy, we are going to be counting a grand total of 77 items per day. So that is our cycle counting example based off of our cycle counting policy that was provided to us by our organization, which is um, A items once a month, B items once a quarter, and C items once every six months. Here's how you do the cycle counting uh, math to determine how many items will be counted every single day. Okay, so now let's talk quickly about record accuracy. I've been, been talking about it you know, off and on throughout this chapter, but you have to have accurate inventory records uh, or you're going to be in a lot of trouble when you're trying to manufacture or sell your products. If you believe that you have something in inventory and then when you go to grab it, it's not there, you're going to have a shortage and shortages are very expensive to try and overcome. You either have to build something quickly, buy something and have it delivered quickly, or your customers are going to be unhappy when you cannot fulfill their entire order for them. So record accuracy is a critical ingredient in the production and inventory systems uh, because it, you have to have what you believe that you have on hand. So record accuracy allows organizations to focus on what's needed because you know you have on hand what you think that you have on hand. It's necessary to make precise decisions about ordering, scheduling, and shipping. So if you don't have something on hand, then you either need to hurry and make or buy it. Um, and we'll be doing a lot more of that in chapter 14 on the MRP processing portion. Uh, you've got your gross requirements, then your net requirements. So if you don't have inventory on hand, then you need to manufacture something or buy something to fulfill that order. Um, one thing about record accuracy is that stock rooms should be secure. Uh, like I was talking about in our last video where uh, there is some uh, inventory shrinkage and loss, uh, especially for A items. Uh, because they can many times be very expensive. Um, you need to have stock rooms uh, secure so that your um, expensive items do not uh, get lost or stolen um, by your employees. And it's sad to have to say that, but it does happen. So inventory shrinkage or inventory shrink is the loss of products between point of manufacture or purchase from supplier and point of sale. Uh, so shrinkage is booked inventory minus the physically counted inventory. And that's how you determine what your inventory shrink is. Um, one more thing about stock rooms being secure. Uh, we literally had um, various different stock rooms in the manufacturing facility that I worked in. 
but we had gates built around some of our most expensive items so that they were very secure. And then we had gates around an area where our, our vendor, our supplier, would manage inventory for us on a consignment basis. So it was their liability and it was their inventory. So we had a very secure stock room just for them where they kept their material at our facility. So keeping stock rooms secure is an important part of inventory management. Okay. In regards to inventory shrinkage, shrinkage is approximately 1.4% of retail sales every year. Um, when I started teaching this course many years ago, that number was closer to 3%, uh, but it is getting smaller and smaller on an annual basis, mainly because of technology. Uh, so whether it's employee theft or shoplifting or even administrative error, um, inventory shrinkage is getting better because of technology. You know, we've got those little GPS tags on a lot of the products that we buy. There's security cameras everywhere. And so it's just getting harder and harder to physically steal things, uh, either from your own employer or to have someone steal something from you. Uh, and this isn't just uh, retail stores, even though this figure is retail. Uh, inventory shrinkage and theft, it happens everywhere. And so uh, it's very important to keep your stock rooms secure so that you know uh, that the inventory you believe you have is actual, actually there. Okay, and then the last slide I want to show you tonight, this will not be on your uh, exam, nothing on here will be, but this is just an example of how I've used ABC classifications and my cycle counting policy to help change purchasing and manufacturing behaviors. So this is a very, very real life example of what I provided to my purchasing and manufacturing team uh, for um, what we believe to be our ABC and our cycle counting uh, procedures. So if you look at the far left, I, I've told you that I used the percentage value of 80%, 15%, and 5% for ABC classifications. When I did that analysis, we had $32.6 million worth of annual purchases. When we did the 80, 15, and 5% ABC analysis, that comes out to 1,274 A items, 2,387 B items, and almost 9,000 C items. So again, there's you know seven more times C items than there are A, and I used a dramatic 80, 15, and five ABC percentage analysis. That worked out to 26.1 million of worth of product and inventory that was coded as an A, 5 million coded as a B, and only 1.6 million coded as a C to get our total, $32.6 million in purchases. You can see I broke down the annual threshold, the annual average per item. So the annual usage dollar value per item for our A's was $20,000 a year. For our, B, for our B's it was 2,000 and for our C's it was 183,000. Then I broke down and said, here's how many annual deliveries I want you to receive for A, B, and C items. And you can see, again, it's a pretty dramatic difference that for A items, I gave permission to my team to have them received once per week. In inventory management, it's that delicate balance of having the right inventory on hand, but also managing your cost. So for these expensive items that average $20,000 per year, I was okay receiving those every single week because that helped keep my inventory dollar value low. On the flip side of that, the C's where something might have only cost $183 per year, I would tell my purchasing team, go ahead and buy the entire year's quantity all at once. Go ahead and bring it in all at the same time. The worst they could do is if they did that for all 9,000 items, which they wouldn't have, is we would have had $1.6 million worth of inventory on hand at any given time if we had all 9,000 items fully in stock. So if you do that math, the best case scenario, most likely, is that if they had six months of inventory on hand, then there was only $800,000 worth of inventory there. So the key for my team in the manufacturing facility that we, that we were in, which was a high mix, low volume facility, I never wanted my team to be late on the C items. So I gave them permission to buy almost a whole year's worth. And that was uh, a mentality shift for them. But it really helped our on-time delivery because we rarely had shortages of C items using this methodology. So you can see that I created different strategic plans and purchase order policy given the ABC classification 
for our A items, we did Kanban's, we did consignment, we did economic order quantities. Those are things um, that we incorporated into our daily practices and things that we will learn in other chapters in this book. And then for C's, again, I would have them buy just as many uh, as they needed to cover them for, you know, six months to a year because I didn't want them to be late and I didn't want there to be stock outs. So this was all started when we did our ABC analysis and that helped me to drive decisions for the rest of the purchasing organization and for the manufacturing organization. They followed the same mentality, um, but you can see that it all started with the ABC classification and it worked its way through all the way down to our ABC cycle counting policy as well which I had here, which was A's were counted every two months, B's were counted uh, uh, every six months or uh, twice per year, and then C's were counted once per year at once every 12 months. So it all started with the ABC analysis and it worked its way through to change our whole purchasing guidelines and our purchasing structure.